guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm glad to have you back. My name is Jani and I'm a second year OBGYN resident. Today we're going to be talking about the menstrual period. Before we get started, please, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel and so you can be notified of all the videos that I upload. So remember to click the subscribe button and the notification bell, as well as you can follow me on my social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, so you can stay up to date on what I'm doing. I am most active on Instagram, so I will leave the links over here so you can follow me along. So let's go ahead and get started. I wanted to start this series called Let's Talk About Women's Health. So we'll be touching on different issues that affect women's health. I already kind of started this when I launched my channel last year, talking about contraception. I will leave that link over here in one of the little cards. But today, we're going to be talking about the menstrual cycle. First off, I would love to recommend a book, Taking Charge of Your Fertility by Tony Weschler. This is an amazing resource for any woman looking to learn more about their body, about um, what happens with their hormones, how their cycle changes every month, how you can learn about your own body and take charge of your fertility. So a lot of people don't know what fertility awareness method is. You can learn all about it in the book, but you will not only learn about fertility awareness method, you will also learn so much about your own body. I definitely recommend it. The first thing that I want to talk about is there are three parts to your menstrual cycle. So there is an endocrine part. That means there is a part that works with your brain and your hormones. There is a part that goes on in your ovaries and there's a part that goes on inside your uterus with your endometrial lining. So the first day of your menstrual period is the first day that you have bleeding. So bleeding equals day number one of your period. This is when your hormones are at the lowest. A lot of people feel very cruddy and they don't feel like themselves because those hormones are so low. People can feel down, depressed, sad, very irritable and there's a lot of things going on um, in your body during that time and we can't really figure out um, how we feel what's going on with our bodies because our own body is trying to get back into the rhythm of things. So from day one, um, you have very low, low hormones and your cycle should normally last between three to seven days on average. Um, most women have a cycle that's about five to seven days and that is completely normal. From days one to five, um, your ovaries will begin to produce hormones. And the reason that this happens is because when those hormone levels are very low, it stimulates your pituitary, which is a gland inside your brain that produces hormones uh, when those levels are very low so that they can increase. So those hormones go down to your ovaries, they stimulate your ovaries to start producing hormones like estrogen, and progesterone but progesterone won't come into play until a lot later in the menstrual cycle so mostly progesterone and testosterone in the very beginning women produce testosterone um, just in very low quantities and just because testosterone is a precursor to estrogen that means that in order for us to be able to produce estrogen we have to produce testosterone first in the form of Deanderstein diome. From days five to seven, there is a dominant follicle. So follicles are little pockets in your ovaries where there is an egg inside. These usually begin to get stimulated three to four months before your actual ovulation, but every month a dominant follicle is gonna take the lead and this is the follicle that is gonna go through all the way through ovulation to release an egg so you can get fertilized and then you can have a baby if that is what you are trying to do because that is the default that your body is um, programmed to do. It's programmed to try and have a baby every month. So from days five to seven, the dominant follicle grows and this is stimulated by the hormone FSH or follicular, stimul follicular stimulating hormone. Um, it goes from your pituitary down to your ovaries. It stimulates some cells known as the granulosa cells. And these cells will produce estrogen, which will help the follicle mature. It will also um, go on and will stimulate your endometrium, which is the lining inside your uterus, to begin growing again after it has been shed in your menstrual cycle. So there is um, a layer that remains behind after your menstrual period. It's called the basal layer. And this is uh, basically the 
stem cells, the generating cells of the endometrium, they don't leave. They stay there and then they grow every month and then the superficial parts of it get shed in the menstrual period. So, so far we've talked about days one through seven where we have low hormones for the first few days and that stimulates her pituitaries to go to release follicle stimulating hormone that will go down to our ovaries to start simulating the granulosa cells to produce estrogen and that will one help the follicle begin to grow and become a dominant follicle and will also begin to start stimulating our endometrium to grow. I hope you're following me to this point. So during these times when estrogen begins to rise is when we feel our best. Estrogen is a very good hormone for women. It helps us feel balanced. It helps us feel angry, but in excess it can also make us feel very irritable, cranky, moody, or in very low levels it is the same. It can make us feel very irritable, cranky, moody, depressed, sad, etc. So this continues to happen and the levels keep rising as estrogen continues to rise. And then around between days 10 and 14, your body starts producing what's called a luteinizing hormone or LH. So also produced in your brain, it is released and it goes down to the ovaries and stimulates theca cells to produce more androstenedione, which is the testosterone that women produce. And this will, when the LH reaches its highest concentration, is when ovulation occurs. So LH is the stimulus that will cause ovulation to happen. Let's say that we are using a very traditional cycle of 28 days. This would be on day 14. Um, your body would release an egg to be released into your fallopian tubes and this is what happens during ovulation. And this is triggered by a surge or an elevation in your LH levels. So one thing that I want to make clear at this point is that cycles can vary. So just because you have a cycle that's longer than 28 days doesn't mean that you are abnormal. As long as you have a period every month or every 28 to 35 days, that's considered a normal regular menstrual cycle. Cycles that are less than 28 days can be normal. Usually you want them to be longer than 21 days because if not, there are other implications which I will not get into in this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions about the menstrual cycle that I did not cover here. If there's more that you want to know, I have a few recommendations for books and websites that I can recommend so you can learn more about your own body. Let me know what other things or other topics you want me to cover in this Let's Talk About Women's Health series because I want to know what you guys want to learn about your own bodies. So let's continue from day 15 to 24. These days are like maturation days where other things will start to happen. Estrogen will reach a plateau level, so that means it won't continue increasing. It will reach a steady level. It will remain the same. And then your the follicle that was there now becomes a corpus luteum. And then this will produce progesterone um, to maintain and support one, the endometrium, and two, the growing embryo, if there is an embryo. Um, so the corpus luteum will also produce beta HCG if uh, you do become pregnant. What happens is that the egg is released from the follicle and it is basically grasped by the fimbriae, which are finger-like projections from your fallopian tube, and that pretty much recovers the egg and helps it travel towards the uterus. Sperm would normally meet the egg in the fallopian tube, the most common place where this happens is called the ampulla, and then it becomes an embryo and it travels from the fallopian tube all the way to implant inside the uterus. Implantation will normally occur about 7 to 10 days after ovulation, um, and this can cause different symptoms in different women. Some women have spotting, some women have pain, some women start having um, pregnancy symptoms immediately after that. Nothing else much happens other than the endometrium continues to grow, but it grows in a different way. 
So at the beginning of the cycle, it begins to grow from a very little nothing, very little film, like a tissue paper thin layer. It begins to grow and become thicker, but then it's still not mature. So when the progesterone starts to be released from your ovaries, it creates engorgement of the blood vessels in the endometrium and it causes it to become mature. Uh, it causes it to become like a big, big soft plushy feather pillow where a baby or an embryo want to implant and sleep and create its little nest. So that's the purpose of the second part of your menstrual cycle, the luteal phase is to mature the endometrium and make sure that it is ready to support a pregnancy. So this is also why we talked about in the contraception video where how progesterone also works to inhibit the growth of the endometrium with IUDs, progesterone pills, and the Nexplanon because it provides progesterone the whole time. So progesterone in the very beginning would inhibit the endometrium from beginning to grow again. So then we move on to days 24 to 28 in which hormones begin to decrease if you are not pregnant. So we talked about estrogen becoming to a steady state and progesterone begins to rise and become higher, uh, the dominant hormone in the luteal phase. So if by day 24 there is no implantation, there is no pregnancy to be supported, then those levels will begin to decrease and then we will start to get PMS symptoms, we can uh, start feeling different ways, we can have, start feeling moody again, and we will start feeling that down from being this high and being all happy, having normal hormone levels to having very low hormone levels. If you are not pregnant, then by day 28, you will have very, very low levels of your hormones and this will cause your body to have a bleed and the cycle will start all over again. Making a recap, we have different hormones. We have two major hormones that play a role, estrogen and progesterone. They are released by your ovaries primarily uh, by the theca and granulosa cells as well as the corpus luteum. There are, there are three parts of the cycle. One is the endocrine part, which is the hormonal part that, take, that comes from your pituitary gland. There is an ovarian component, which is the cycle of what happens, to, in, what happens in your ovary from the dominant follicle being stimulated, ovulation, and then a corpus luteum. And then we have the endometrial part of it in which the endometrium is shed, it begins to grow again, it matures, and then it sheds again, and the cycle starts all over again. Whew, that was a mouthful. Um, I'm glad I could do this in a very summarized way. I hope this is helpful for those of you wanting to learn more about your bodies. If you have a daughter, a friend, a niece, and nephew or anyone that you want to learn about the menstrual cycle. I hope this video is helpful. It gives you some insight. I hope the graphics that I have placed here are helpful. If you want to learn more, I definitely recommend looking at the Taking Charge of Your Fertility book. There are other sites like Bedsider, ReproductiveAccess.org, which I have mentioned before, which are great resources for contraception and the menstrual cycle and learning about your own bodies as a female and being empowered. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all in my next video.